Ho, 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 folks. Welcome back. This is day five of our LA vlog. We begin the day by a bus ride to, uh, I forget. But you know, LA. Lovely, isn't it? Took a walk through a mall. We went to a Korean H Mart shopping center and got some cucumbers along with a chocolate dipped cookie because you really just gotta start your day off strong, you know? Cover all those nutritional bases. Gotta, gotta, gotta do something with your life, don't you? So Lot, famous for moon pies, apparently makes chocolate chip cookies. It's gonna be the best thing in the world. Whoa. This chocolate covered one side, cookie on the other. Can I see it? That looks like a decent cookie exterior. Hello, this is ASMR to cover over the copyrighted music in the background. That chocolate smell is undeniably you good. You smell through the mask? Yeah. Nice. Ooh. It's soft. I was worried it was going to be too crispy, but it's not. That's a good ass cookie. A good ass cookie? A good ass cookie. Describe the texture. Um, crumbly, but not crispy. Definitely has that feeling of like additives to keep it fresh. I like to keep it soft and pliable. Chips Ahoy sort yes. of flavor to it. It looks like one too. Yeah, it's like, like a, a soft and chewy it's like one. A, it's like a lot version of a Chips Ahoy nice. with chocolate coating. But it's 129 is it worth it? I wouldn't buy it again, but I'm glad I got it. Try it, June. Always worth the experience, huh? Mm-hmm. It's a Monster Chick Chock is the name. It has that like chocolate liqueur smell to it where it kind of snakes up your nose and it smells like chocolate but it also smells like sugar slight bit of alcohol like vanilla extract if you ever smell it and it just like snakes all the way up into your brain immediate thought this reminds me of a kashi granola bar one of those chocolate covered granola bars it's not hard but it's also not soft or chewy or moist it's very strange it almost tastes like icing sugar is melting on your tongue and it almost breaks apart like fudge. You're right, 129 wouldn't buy again, but I'm glad we tried it, for sure. After we ate our breakfast, we took a walk through Koreatown. We went into the Galleria, we took a look, we didn't buy anything because we had a large food itinerary for this day. So there's no use buying food souvenirs when you are going to eat them anyway. The day was as pleasant as ever, super sunny, best coast weather showing right through. First stop, dumplings. Dumplings for breakfast, dumplings for lunch, for dinner, for brunch, for any time of day, year, lifetime. This place was noted in our maps as a Anthony Bourdain spot. We took a look at the menu. We had a really tough time deciding. Aaron finally tossed the ball in my court after debating for 10 minutes with himself what to order. So I ordered. There was this open-ended dumpling, spicy steamed with shrimp inside, and I thought that sounded exactly like what I wanted. The wrappers in the picture looked like pure mastery of dough making. It has that kind of semi-clear wrapper around the dumpling filling and it's shrinked to hug the filling once cooked. June, the seasoning in the sauce bottle gives you a delicious taste of food. That's good. But what is it? It's like a clear liquid. I think it might be vinegar. Ooh. Maybe. Well, I'm gonna try the kimchi and is that radish? Strongerly pickled. So lightly pickled. Strong early pickles. We love it. All right, I'm going in for a dump. Oh, going straight for the spicy sauce right away. Yep. Oh, that's lovely. Nice dough texture on the bottom. I don't really know what to say other than I like this a lot. It's some really nice assembly here. Like it's not really juicy. Like everything is distinct. You know, the wrapper is distinct from the filling. And I feel like it can't really be juicy because it's open ended. Mm -hmm. Really good flavors. Looks like there's mushrooms in there. And some kind of greens, yeah. maybe scallions or chives. Soy sauce? Does the dumpling need more flavor additives? Like vinegar and soy sauce? I would say they give this right in the middle for a reason. I think they know it works really well together. It's um like a tiny bit boring for me without any additives, but I can tell 
it's a really well-made dumpling, really high quality ingredients. It's interesting, it's probably those, some of the least juicy dumpling filling I've had, but it lets the flavor of the pork and the shrimp come out a lot more. So you're tasting the meat a lot more. And the first thing I'm realizing is the skin is extremely thin. My chopstick went straight into it and feels kind of sticky, which I love. And it smells like a good dumpling. You know what that good dumpling smell is like? It's got nice little chives in it, nice little mushroom umami porkiness to it, a little bit of meatiness balanced out by sesame oil, well toasted, and that sweet dough wheat flavor. If you smell it, you can taste it. Such good meat, a little bit of spiciness. Even without the sauce, it's spicy already. I'm not sure what's in there. It's a really nice pervasive spice. It kind of lights a little tingle all across the planes of your tongue. And then as you swallow, it lights a trail of forest fire down your throat. But it's contained. And the chives and the pork just dance in that fire. I'm just here to tell you whether I like the ginger for the poetry. The doughy skin is neither too al dente or too tender. It falls apart just as you're 80% of the way through your bite. And then that little nice little bounce is contrasted perfectly with the firm pork. The little squeak and crunch of the chives. I don't know what they are, but I think they're chives. All around, a really nice handmade dumpling. I love how the skin wrinkles and kind of shrivels and shrinks around the filling. That's when you know the skin has a really nice thickness and thinness to it. It's just like... A thickness and a thinness? Just like vacuum seals in all the flavor and hugs in the filling. And you know that it's a cohesive body instead of just a wrapper with filling inside. This is a dumpling. Salty, light, almost like mirany, a little bit sweet. Not really vinegary at all. Mmm. Mmm. Should I try them together? The fruitiness that comes out when you pair that with that. There's a new note of sesame seed oil that comes out. It makes it taste like fresh sesame seeds combined with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of like almost cilantro parsley notes. I don't know what it is about the two, but it might be the fresh jalapeno that's inside here and a little bit of the sugar that's inside here. I mean, obviously sugar makes everything better. I love this kimchi. It has a light fishiness to it, but like a sweet fishiness to it. And it just adds that extra layer of umami that makes it a multi-dimensional kimchi. It's not too tart, it's not too salty. It's definitely not sweet, but it has a nice wholesomeness to it. It tastes like there's seaweed, like kelp. And that sweetness of the kelp kind of infuses itself into the cabbage. This might be one of the most savory kimchi's I've ever had. There's some dark leafy greens in here. My favorite. Squeeze the vinegar and so sesame. Yeah, let me get one out. The rest is yours. Aaron, you have to try it with um with the daikon. With with the daikon and the kimchi. They're just they make that dumpling like a different dumpling almost. Okay. A different dumpling. Mm -hmm. Ooh. The spicy chili sauce is so good too. Mm -hmm. It's like nicely acidic. Not too really spicy. Everything goes so well with the dumplings here. Everything is just like the perfect condiment to go on. That you can't go wrong. Candy. Wow. I'm so impressed. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try another kimchi now. Do you think this was meant to be put on the burgers? Or you want to it? I don't know and I don't care. It's so good. I wasn't even hungry before this and now I'm like ravenous. Mm. This makes me want to try the rest of the menu. Mm -hmm. I think I picked well. You did. And we're eating this basically for breakfast. Yeah. And it's great. I honestly would eat this for breakfast every day. It's a very fulfilling breakfast. Mm -hmm. The two pickles complement each other too. I don't know how they do it here. Everything goes so well. And with that delicious breakfast under our belt, we went on next door, essentially, to dessert. So we went 20 steps. 
As usual, I deliberated over which flavor to get because there were a lot of good choices, but at the end of the day, I went with cookie butter. A lot of reviews said that they loved it, so I just had to go with the crowd favorite. That's, uh, also promising too. I'm fine with whatever. I think we made a pretty decent choice. I mean, that's a hefty taiyaki though. It's, I know, it's not nothing. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to destroy it now. Croissant taiyaki. Do you I've like? I've seen this before. Do you like to bite in the head of the fish or the tail of the fish? Well, first? I love these kind of rectangular ones because there is no you head or bonus. tail really. It's like context. Yeah. It's not a fish anymore. You're not destroying the fish. You're just eating a pastry. All right. Oh my wow. God, crunch. Yeah, that's no normal taiyaki, folks. That's something special. Layers upon layers upon yeah. layers. Honestly? Do the crunch again. Ugh. Honestly, less than five bucks is not a crazy price for this. With how much work croissants take. I could see this cut. If this was in New York, this would be like $8. Oh yeah, Can I do a tear. Mm -hmm. Is it terrible? Not really, but I wanted to. You squished it, June. But I'm revealing the cookie butter. You reveal, I eat. All those layers, man. Yeah. It's a little unusual since you expect red bean to be in a taiyaki. Mm -hmm. And so this takes, I think, some getting used to with the taste. Obviously being cookie butter, it tastes great. But uh, I'm not sure what it's adding to the taiyaki. I think the star here is so, so clearly the croissant pastry. That is sort of irrelevant what you put in the middle. Worth it. Absolutely Does worth it. Does it make you curious to come back and try the other flavors? Not really, since I feel like I'm getting the star of the show mm -hmm. in the croissant layers. So I'd be happy with whatever the filling is. Look at how shiny it is. Does it taste buttery? Oh yeah. First off, just smelling it, it smells like the best Asian bakery pastry smell. You know that smell. The moment you walk into like a two le jour or a Paris baguette, it's that smell. It's the smell of egg yolks baked until it's caramelized, set against light, fluffy brioche bread with a slight bit of sugar and that butteriness. Look at that cookie butter. All right, I'm gonna try a bite without much of the filling, just the layers. I don't know how they got the outside so crispy. It was delightful. This is like the best version of almond croissant without the flakiness. It's all compact. And so if you like a croissant's really chewy and kind of moist and slightly dense. Can I say something possibly controversial? Mm. I don't really see this as a taiyaki. Okay. I, it's the shape of a taiyaki and it sort of looks like one. Yes. But without the red bead filling, and without that sort of like nice golden brown, fluffy, hot slash warm taiyaki. But dough. it says merci. Merci. Is this a taiyaki anymore? You've, you've replaced the two classic elements of taiyaki and just kept the form. The ship of Theseus. You're a ship of Theseus. I think it is. You think it's a taiyaki? Is a taiyaki still a taiyaki if it doesn't have the shape of a fish? Yes, because I think the taiyaki is about the construction and the fact that it has that fluffy, hot, mm. but also edge crispy dough oh filled with red bean paste. You know what? I have a controversial take too. Okay. I don't like taiyaki as much as I love this. What do I like more? You like the gooey half melted taiyaki. Yeah. I like real taiyaki more than this. I also disagree with you on that I love the cookie butter in this. It tastes like a sweetened version of gritty, freshly ground almond butter, and it looks like it too. Once I accept that this isn't a taiyaki, then I can enjoy the cookie butter for what it is. Enjoy it. Look at the uh, pearl sugar. Just crunchiness. I think that's how they get it so crispy, is the sugar melts and caramelizes yeah. into almost like a creme brulee top. This is know. This is the perfect dessert. It's a great pastry, mm -hmm. just not a taiyaki to me. And you, what did you say? The perfect dessert. Yeah. Wow. It is carby, 
fatty, contained, sugary, all in their separate layers too. And then you have three different textures, each melting into the other. Sweet, but it's also flavorful, and it's fun, it's beautiful, it's crispy. We're getting to the mega crisp zone. Do it. You ate the merci. It is a great dessert. It is so good. I'm just trying to come to terms with don't be a Puritan. The philosophical issues of whether this is a tayaki or not. Food is not philosophy. Food is pure visceral carnage. You kill something, you make it into something else. A fish? You eat it, you enjoy it, how you many, digest it, and many, then you shit it out. How many fishes died for this? Zero, that's the best part. I hope. I can't get enough of that crunch. Has anyone ever put a fish in a tayaki? That's a good idea. Tuna fish taiyaki? Yeah. I would eat that. A savory Tuna salad. version? Mm -hmm. The layers are all being shown off right here. It's truly beautiful. The shine, the sugar crunch. Sweet, buttery, sweet. That's my fetish. My fetish? But we'll talk about it in another video, okay. I guess. <laughs> Thoroughly stuffed and thoroughly happy, we hopped into an Uber to head to Alhambra, where you guessed it, we had more food waiting for us. First stop in Alhambra was Chengdu Taste. This was a special recommendation brought to us by our Uber driver from the day before. We really had no plans on going anywhere else outside of central LA, but he told us that if we wanted some Sichuan food, this was the place to go. So go we did. Our driver recommended to us this dish of chicken scraps, was how he described it in Chinese. It turns out it is just a lot of bits of chicken that has cartilage and soft bone surrounding little tiny nuggets of meat bomblasted with dried chili peppers tossed with peanuts and just the most intensely Sichuanese flavors you could imagine. We also ordered a noodle dish because he recommended noodles at this place. However, I think I chose terribly wrong. Maybe the first sign that this noodle dish wasn't gonna be the best noodle dish was the fact that it came like four or six minutes after we ordered it. It was just way too fast for a good noodle dish to come. Mexican wrestler dance. Yes, yeah, totally Mexican. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. That was fast, wow. <laughs> Dude, that's a lot of noodles. I know. You said you want a noodle. Yes. It's a mostly empty house. Just you and me, babe. Mm -hmm. You want to dig in? I guess so. Okay, I see. It, there's a lot more sauce on the bottom. Good. This is a mixed situation. There we go. Yeah, baby. Okay, I will say this is a huge serving. It is. Uh, not expecting that. I think we come from New York with like New York prices where for $10 you get like half the amount. <laughs> yeah. I love how it's coating everything and very brave of you to wear white yeah, on I a felt, Sichuan I day. I felt a splatter already. Well, By all accounts, I know this noodle looks freaking fantastic. It's saucy, it's shimmery with oils, slick with flavor, lots of sesame, lots of redness, lots of bouncy looking strands. But man oh man, when we put it in our mouth and chomped down with our teeth and gave it a chew, it was some of the flattest, mealiest noodles I think we've ordered in recent history. Now granted, with COVID and everything, we haven't been eating out all that much but I like the flavor it's great for today I don't like the noodles I agree they're not bouncy at all yeah exactly agree with you very very boring the spice nuggets the little bits here really good really delicious there's like fermented beans there's a little bit of scallions going on the sauce coats the noodles really well and there's little tiny crunchy bean sprouts but for the most part the noodles aren't they're not mousy. They're not al dente. They're, they taste kind of packaged. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I thought for cold noodles, they would avoid overcooking them. Yeah, these really have no uh, resistance to them. Disappointment, huh? The sauce is fine. It's a decent flavor, but yeah, the noodles just uh, boring. Do you taste the garlic at least? And I do taste a little bit of the citron oil. A little bit, but even that could be stronger. I agree. I think there's too much noodles for the sauce. Yeah. Too much? 
noodle, and the worst part is they're not good. For how good it looked on screen and in real life, I was very, very, very surprised at how disappointing this bite was. None of that al dente bounciness that you would want from a thick Chinese pulled noodle. Ah uh, well, you can't win them all. We eat so much. We are just blessed to have all the good stuff, but every once in a while you're gonna end up with a plate of mediocre stuff, and uh, this is where you watch our show and you don't order that when you go. But you know what? Do order the chicken. Highly recommend this one. The plate was piled high with not only chicken, spices like cumin, sesame seeds, and chili, it also came with huge chunks of garlic, which is one of Aaron's favorite foods. Every single bite was coated in citron chili oil, and yes, my mouth was a buzzin' by the time we finished eating this one, and I could not stop eating this one. My hands are gonna hurt after this. I'm gonna get some peanuts, chili crisp, Super crispy. Chicken, super crunchy and tender. Garlic, half tender, half raw, super fragrant. And every single bite was as good as the last. Yeah. This is a noodle improver. It's an anything improver. Yes. Um, do you see this? My chopsticks are just dripping with red oil and there's little tiny bits of cumin attached to them and sesame seeds. Oh my god, this is amazing. This is my favorite part of chicken. It's like all the cartilage bit. If you like chicken breast or just like drums and you like that easy meat, this is not gonna be the dish for you. But if you like the kind of meat that's almost bordering on bone, where all the flavor is and where all the fat is and it makes you like just chew a thousand times before you can swallow it, this is it. This is my shit. Chili chicken? Chicken gristle. This is that bone joint on the end of the bone where it's like all crunchy and slightly bony. And fatty. It's a texture wonderland. It's a carnival in here. Crunchy peanuts. So good. I know this was advertised as garlic noodles, but those are the garlic noodles. Is your mouth tingling it? Because mine is. Oh yeah, I made your tingle bill. Somebody run over and help us eat this. <laughs> we need help. And wouldn't you know it, lo and behold, as soon as I said that, somebody DM'd us on Instagram asking us, we're in his neighborhood, can he drop by and say hi? And of course we said yes, please come, help us eat all of this food. We have way too much. And uh, he came over. And for the rest of the day, we had a tour guide slash viewer buddy take us around all of this area, around Alhambra, San Marino, Pasadena. We went to some supermarkets, checked out their inventory of special snacks, condiments. We found this black sesame oil I've never seen before. He then drove us to a special park. Lacey Park. Basically a really nice park maintained for really rich people who I did not see many of but it is pretty much close to the public unless it's a certain day, maybe weekends, I can't remember. But we went, there were lovely roses, many different colors, many different kinds, really manicured tall trees. I felt really rich. Nice to be rich, huh? But not really. And then we went to a nice little bougie boutique, brunchy, snacky, prepared food store. We got a thick, dense slice of mint chocolate brownie. We split it. And at this point, I don't even know how my stomach was feeling. Not very good. We had way too much food inside there, churning, churning. And uh, unfortunately, LA being LA, we weren't really walking around. Home was taking us every place in his car. Um, thank you so much, home. And we were just being lazy, lazy butts, eating all the delicious foods, checking out the neighborhoods. Home treated us to a slice of Earl Grey pie. It was good. It was very rich, but it was actually just very delicious. The Earl Grey flavor was pretty on point. All right, somebody dig in. 
Gladly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Mighty creamy looking. I'm trying to pick up the Earl Grayness of it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's sort of a, more of an aftertaste thing when the bergamot hits. I can smell the Earl Grey. You didn't smell the Earl Grey? I didn't get close enough. Yet. That is exactly like a cheesecake. It's so creamy. I don't, it's so rich. I don't think I can eat a whole slice of this. There's like whipped cream. This tastes like butter, almost. What did you think, Aaron? It is very rich, yeah. Chocolate on top of the bottom crust. It kind of slicks away the sweetness and the richness, and it gives you a little bit of that dark cocoa bitterness. But yeah, this is extremely decadent. It is like whipped butter. <laughs> I like it. The flavor's great. It is just very rich. Like frozen pastry cream cheesecake hybrid. Do you like it? No, it's a little rich like a sour. <laughs> oh, wow. It tastes like whipped white chocolate mm, flavored with Earl Grey. I see that. I see that. I see that. I, I'm with you. It tastes like butter to me. It's like it's, it's rich. Butter. Oh my god, I didn't realize how rich it was. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. No, no, no. It's different. Don't apologize. So I experienced something new with you guys. Actually. Yeah. We Cheers. then went for a happy yeah. hour two for one michelada. Mi michelada? Did I say that right? I still can't get it right, guys. Sorry. Then we went to dinner at Wang Java House. This was a definite go on our map. We knew we had to eat here. I forget why. I just know that their menu was extensive and if you're a person who loves staring at menus, this is a place to come. It's, it's not bad, but it's kind of like a home menu. Which the one? Sayurasa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tamarins. Oh, I love stuff. Both our friend Chris, aka Wander Sauce on Instagram, knew about this place, ate there, loved it, and Hong also ate here and liked it as well, so there was no way we weren't gonna eat here. Sure. I actually do. I think this is a chili sauce. The table came with lots of spicy sambals. We were very excited to give them a try, and then when the food came, everything looked absolutely just glistening with flavor. Thank you. We had to order several things, obviously, but our stomachs were really, really full at this point. This is perfectly lightly crisp. I knew I had to get fried tempeh because I was feeling like something vegetarian, something fried sounds really good, and tempeh, I'm starting to really love tempeh. It was oily on the outside, crispy, lightly so, inside was solid, soybean, flavor, rich, earthy, creamy, everything that I had hoped for, lightly spiced, served on a bed of straight chilies that Aaron was brave enough to dig into straight. Oh, I was not, so not touching that with a 10 foot pole, uh, but I believe it was, it was acceptable. The inside is like creamy firm tofu almost. All right, I'm going for this one. We also got a big bowl of soto batawi, which is a Jakarta style beef soup cooked in coconut milk, and it was so good, so comforting, so flavorful, and absolutely delicious when you dip your tempeh into it. Add a little bit of sambal, that completes your bite. The final big thing that we got for the table was a whole crispy fried chicken. That stuff was tender and flavorful. On the inside and the outside, it was topped with a shit ton of crispy bits. What is this made out of? The crispy? Enjoy your meal. Oh. How do you oh. make the bits? Like how do I, how, I don't know how to make uh. cook this. It's a secret. Flour oh. and some spices, spices and then she deep fry them. One thing to note about this establishment is that the owners are extremely friendly, extremely patient. They explain to us what goes into everything. They even took our picture before we started digging in. Absolutely highly recommend this place. Okay, on three, I'm going to focus it on the food. Now. Uh, one, I love it. One, two, three. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. There was fattiness, there was layers, there was colors, textures. Aaron had to get his Instagram photos in. We poured some water, ready for the spice, ready for the heaviness, and we dug in. God, the flavor is so... so what else is on the list? But like with a little bit of funk. It's yeah. almost like cheesy it's like in, in very flavor. Very slightly. Mm -hmm. Sipping, it's so good. The, the coconut. There's 
like ginger and maybe lemongrassy. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of flavors going on there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Wow. The brown sambal is where it's at. Yeah, that's definitely the interesting one. You guys ordered it. I'm charging you with finishing this. Has anyone just taken a mouthful of this part cheese? <laughs> Textures are good, flavors are good. The soup mates a great sauce for both the chicken and the tempeh. What if you do the spicy sambal and then the sweet soy? Or whatever this is. What if? <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's really cool. Yeah, promo, yes. And then I went around all the way to the end. I just took the train all the way to the end. Oh, really? Until I hit the ferry and then I just went across. This is nice, though. Yeah, the ferry ride is nice. Number one. This is number two. I thought four was the highest. No, the last that's the highest. Oh, sure. yeah. oh, okay. So all right, there you go. So you, none serious. of you were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> this is hot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. This looks serious. Wow. Yeah, man. Dude, I'm excited don't, for that. Don't, Can we smash it? Don't, don't touch it with your hand. Oh. Okay. Don't smell it. Don't smell it. Don't touch it with your hand. Then you go to the bathroom. Ah. Or touch your eyes. Of course. Oh, it smells good. Like it smells so fragrant. Ooh. Yeah. That smells almost like dumpling filling. That smells amazing. Thank you. Thank smells you. I really, yeah. really appreciate this. We know each other. <laughs> All too well. After that amazing meal and amazing day, we went back for a little nightcap, and that was it. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. See you next time. Cheers. Okay. Even though there's fog, it's still pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's a better Michelada.